Our top story, British special forces are undergoing the biggest cut since the Second World War. The Ministry of Defense is having to downsize the elite SAS after having its budget slashed. And while the decision may save the government a few pennies, many say the cost of axing members of a global asset spells disaster for the country's future. RT's Laura Emmett reports. World-renowned, elite and notoriously camera-shy, these are Britain's special forces at work in Afghanistan. They're seen as one of the greatest assets the UK's army has to offer, but even they aren't immune from government cuts. The Ministry of Defence is being forced to save between 10 and 20 per cent of its budget. For the SAS, that will mean getting rid of those too old for combat duty and axing one of its part-time battalions. Bob Paxman used to be in the SAS and now helps servicemen to overcome post-traumatic stress disorder. He wonders what will happen to men who've spent their lives in extreme situations. My concern would be the, the vast numbers of guys that are now going to be out of work that have been in, in a military environment, uh, um, particularly a, a combat environment, hostile environments for a number of years, that all of a sudden they're going to find themselves with a skill set that they can't use in the civilian community, um, pretty hacked off for the fact that they've, uh, they're now out, out of a job. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see what the, uh, the impact on the you know, social environment in the UK is going to be. Some say the decision to axe old soldiers is a false economy. They're the ones with the know-how and invaluable experience. But needs must, and as the UK's economy shrinks, so difficult decisions have to be made. And economists are urging a proper look at what the UK's defence needs actually are, rather than just lopping off a bit here and there. I think there's a real problem of approach here, and it does seem that really across the board the British government's trying to find 10% savings here, 20% savings there, and I don't think that sort of salami slicing approach is really going to work. But I think what you really need to ask is what are Britain's military needs going to be over the next 10, 20, 30 years insofar as we can predict them, and then design your armed forces to actually accommodate those strategic concerns rather than just trying to save on paper clips and stationery. UK special forces have been active in all the major conflicts in recent years. Iraq, Kosovo, East Timor and now Afghanistan, where 9,500 British troops are currently deployed. But the question is whether the British Army will be able to play peacekeeping or military roles in foreign conflicts in the future. And that at the same time as rising economic powers are increasing their military forces. The military capability of countries like China and India is going to continue to rise because their economies are rising. So that's going to create some nervousness from a period in which NATO countries, uh, and the United States most of all, but also West European countries enjoyed a certain technological superiority against other states. We're going to move into a more multipolar world and perhaps Europeans will feel rather uncomfortable about that. Not just discomfort. Defence cuts ultimately mean European countries will be increasingly dependent on multilateral alliances to ensure their national security. A defence review is currently underway with results due to be published in the late autumn. What insiders hope for is a wide-reaching decision on the UK's defence priorities. What some are afraid they're going to get is paper shuffling and useless cutbacks in Britain's already overstretched armed forces. Laura Emmett, RT, London.